Can I rub all the way to the corner? No. Say it later. Okay, I, we are live. I gotta share everything. You might hear a frog or a cricket, whatever that is. Honestly, a if frog. you're bothered by that ground noise, this is not the place for you. Yeah, our children. Well, the oldest two are still up. Oh, wait, never mind. I can do it on the page or something like that. Do, 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 do. Okay, but, anyways, uh, I haven't got, I had a, after the last video, I had a lady contact me. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk with her, and I'm hoping to Monday. And if you uh, listen, we also, I released the episode early with, uh, with the interview with Courtney. I was going to release it after these videos were out, but decided to go ahead and release it. Uh, do, 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 do. But this one, like I said, is going to go on to his uh, kind of the investigation of the case. And interesting, there's another case that we covered not that long ago. And um, I talked to a gentleman that was a funeral director, and he actually kind of don't he kind of connects, but kind of doesn't. <laughs> I should say. I just want one thing at a time because you're really not making any sense to me. But if you listen to the interview, uh, you might, some of this, I believe we talked about. But talking with his mother, um, she had mentioned that. Um, they didn't that the police didn't uh, tape off the crime scene because they assumed he was a 25 year old homeless man who was six foot. And if you remember from the first video, Kyle was only five foot three. And I think I think I talked about it in the first video, didn't I? I can't remember. I know I talked to you about it because she's only five foot, so not much taller than she is. Yeah, I know we talked about it. All that was on the video, I can't or not. Remember. But you know that's a big that's a big height difference though from being six foot to five foot three. Cause I'm, I uh, think we did talk about. I'm it. like five ten, five eleven, so it'd be more closer to my height. Um, she mentioned about his other backpack was found with papers with his name on them a week later, and it, the backpack was about eighty feet from where his body was found. I'm not sure if this was the red and black one. I believe. Uh, she mentioned about sadly, which. I want to mention something after this, but police made it seem like he was a drug dealer and he wasn't. Uh, but there was an article that just got shared not that long ago uh, this week. They had, uh, they had the date wrong. Not like the date wrong by like a few days, like a week. Cause you know where he was found on the, he went missing on the like 16th. He, he went missing on the 16th. I mean, 15th. And then, you know, the they found on the 16th. Both. They put 23rd, so they were a week off. The medical examiner and everything was a week off? Because that's kind of hard. Like, no, you this have just, the body. This, no, this was just a week. This, They were like a memorable thing, like remembrance. That it's still open. Nobody got arrested or nothing for it. And it was just them talking about it. It was just the other day. Because his mom you know, talked about how they got the date wrong still. It was like a reporter or journalist doing an article on it. Oh, so the police and like medical examiner did, and the media did. Well, there's a few articles because in the first video I mentioned, because I asked her and she said it was the 16th when they found them. A lot of articles, like one of them said the 17th, I think, or the 18th. So it's the, it's the media. Yeah, this is the last article. Yeah. Okay. But 
uh, police won't talk to Kyle's mom either from uh, the way she talked to me and that the prosecutor won't speak to her either. And he even hung up on her, which I don't understand because that happened in a case around here where we're from. And we just covered it. This was a case before with the Colby Brown. And uh, basically the cop here got hateful with his mom and he, and the one that they had, he ended up hanging up on her. I just don't know why. Like, I know police have their job to do, but when you're a mother, you know, and your child was like, you know, in Kyle's case was murdered, you would think they would still be kind of considerate. You know, like I, like I know they got a job to do, but you still think they'd be considerate over it, especially when it's not been solved. But uh, roughly January, February of this year, since she has even heard from law enforcement, she had to call them just to find out a new detective was on the case. So they'd even say, you know, hey, we got somebody else on the case. And uh, third one, since the murder took place, and before that, it had been a year, which might be the fourth one. Some reason four, I don't know why. I might have written down the wrong one. Adrian, can you turn that down a little bit? <sighs> But still, a year from not hearing from nothing, like even if nothing was updated, you know, if they never found anything out, you think maybe check in, you know, not once a week, but maybe once a month or something, say, hey, nothing's updated, you know, nothing's new, we'll keep you updated, you know, we'll call back in a month, something like that. <clears throat> but um, I read that, uh, well, even though the police said that they didn't have nothing to do with it, but I read the one, the last person to see him alive, had changed the story a few times and he was in jail and he's always in trouble and not many people seem to like him, which if you heard the interview with Courtney, we talked about that because she was a CEO in the jail. I guess he's, yeah, he's still in jail, but he was born uh, May 7th, 1999. So he was 17 at the time when all this happened, he was five foot 10 weighed around 165 pounds, but he was arrested September 12th, 2019 for a battery on an officer obstructing a domestic battery. And he was arrested in April 7th of this year for domestic battery, strangulation, malicious wounding. So what is your thoughts on that? That's the last person seen alive. Yes. This is the boy that he all he got the ride. Like it, it was like his friend, but well, still. they some I've heard they've had beef with. Like I kind of don't well, like why. Teenagers, you know, they like they're on and off friends all the time. Well, yeah, but I mean, I get what you're saying, but also, like, yeah, they could have had beef and then they make up, have beef again. Like it, you know, teenagers. But I don't know. That's that's quite a few charges for a fifteen year old. Wait. He was 17 at the time, and he just got arrested. He was 21 with this, and he was 20 at this. Oh, well, I figured, I thought they were the same age. No, he, no he was 17 at the time. He was, oh. he just turned 17, because he was born 99. I was and still not Kyle, a good record for a 17-year-old, either. Well, right? he would have been 21, but this is just the stuff he had happen afterwards. But he's got stuff afterwards, like... So he was 21 with the 15-year-old? No. With Kyle? No, he was 17 <laughs> at the time when Kyle died. Oh, okay, okay. You have me all. No, that was in two, that that was in 2016. This is in 2019, 2020. Gotcha. So he's okay, just recently yeah. got in trouble okay, gotcha. with strangulation and all that. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, Which, that's fishy then, yeah? Okay. I'm just saying he's got violent behavior after the fact is what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm getting at. And she Agreed. said, and in the interview, she had mentioned that, you know, she was in the same where she was a CEO or trying to be all that in the interview, but she's seen so he's still there, which that's only what two months ago, almost three months ago. So she saw him just two, three months ago because he got in trouble. Well, yeah, he's in jail still for that. I'm trying to make sure I got it straight because yeah. I really got messed up there. But it was mentioned that the suspect bragged about how much control he had over his grandma and could, uh, does anybody believe, do you believe like the grandma? Do you think she would take up for him? Kyle's grandma? No. Uh, I don't have his name. This, this guy? It, yeah, it's... Uh, 
Yeah, his his grandma, not Kyle. Would he take up? Well, yeah. I mean, I'd hope my grandma would take up for me. In the interview, we like discuss the names. So I usually don't do the names. But uh, going back to earlier, sorry. Um, where I mentioned about the funeral director, I actually spoke to him because I talked to him on the phone uh, a while back. Um, let me find it. And I was just seeing because he's up in that area. And I was asking him if he knew anything. And he actually knew the grandma and that dropped Kyle off that night. And she said she didn't know, you know, he don't know the kid, but he knew of the lady that drove him to Wheeling, dropped him off, apparently gave her some marijuana for doing so. I guess she lied to the cops about it. Because remember, we talked about in the last video. So Granny's a stoner? Well, I don't know if she smoked, but. She was driving, and the boy, Daly, smoked on the way from my understanding oh. and gave, like, 20, so I paid for gas or something. Yeah. But, so, but she kept it away. Like, she knew that he was missing all that, and then when they found the phone and all that, it's like, oh, you know. So she kind of just kept it all hidden. She didn't think nothing else about it. Well, she's probably thinking that she's too old to be going to jail. Well, she was 68. But uh, he talked about where she was a nurse, and... They knew her from there and assisted her at the funeral home and stuff. And she said, he said that's all he knows of the case other than where they found him. It's right beside the walking trail. And then he said about he knew that she was arrested for contributing to that. And she, he said there was other young boys with her when she drove him to Willing. Like, I know of her grandson and his girlfriend, from my understanding. It's the only thing I've ever read. So if there's another boy tied in there, then that. I've never heard that. But then he talked about, you know, how Kyle had been wrapped up to make it look like he was sleeping. And I asked him if, uh, do you think that she would know more than she claims? And he said, I really don't know. So kind of what I want to go back with, with that. So say, you know, we know that the girlfriend came, went to this. So we know that. Do you, because a lot of people, some people, you know, figure that Kyle wasn't killed where he was found. And, um, hold on. I think, I know me and his mom talked about it. But do we feel that this boy, we know that he's 5'10", 165 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not really big but you think personally you think he could have handled Kyle like say that they did kill Kyle before they took him down there or whoever did do you think somebody that size would be able to carry Kyle five foot three and like 120 well, I guess pounds it would depend because I mean your adrenaline's going if you got some kind of rage going on like some people gonna... feel that they might let him down there and some feel that he might have actually got killed somewhere else and carried down there. I dragged. kind of feel like that. I don't feel like he was killed there. But do you think, like, if this boy couldn't handle him, do you think the girlfriend or the grandma would help? Because the grandma's going to be too old, I would oh, think. No. She might be. Oh, she, no, she, she, might. she might not be. Like, or she might have had the smarts to tell him how to do it on his own without uh, having to. But well, she is in the medical field. Which is the way I understood there's, like, how they had to. You can kind of pull up there. I don't know how deep the hill and stuff is. Um, and one detective uh, tried to blame it on another kid that killed himself. He was never a suspect until he killed himself. So that could just be a coincidence. Like, hey, no, they're looking for a way out and they want well, to get yeah. on the dead guy. So that way it's yeah, like, like, oh, we can't investigate because he's dead. Mm, it's over. No. Yeah, but. But Kyle's mom said that she thought the boy killed himself maybe a year to a year and a half, she thought, after Kyle was found. So, like, it's not really still a coincidence. That's a pretty long ways after. You know what I mean? Like, if it was like a couple of days afterwards, maybe. But yeah. And the boy did have some mental health issues. So that could just be, he could just be depressed over that. But it's, this is where I mentioned about seems that um, it seems that Kyle it was known that him and the boy didn't like each other, but he still agreed to help him. Like 
I remember asking Courtney about that. Like, I don't know why. Like, why would Kyle go to this boy if he didn't like him? Like, did he ask other. I don't know if he asked other people or something like that, and nobody helped him, or he just assumed that this guy would help him no matter what. I, I don't know. So, like, what kind of beef was there? Because apparently the boy still helped him. So. But the grandma said they, you know, dropped Kyle off to Greyhound, which we talked about this a little bit in the other video, but it was no longer open and running at the time, which that's still kind of like, I know we kind of talked last video, like maybe she didn't know it. I don't know how long the place has been closed down for. Like if it's been closed down for a while and she would know, then that's kind of sketchy. Yeah. Because she could be making a story up, say, oh, yeah, we dropped him off to Greyhound. That could just be a cover story there, too. But it's believed the suspect, his grandma, like I said, his gr girlfriend at the time was the one in the car. So I'm assuming, like I said, she was the one that spoke to the uh, investigators. This were mentioned about two people involved because Kyle's mother believed so because he was picked up, not dragged over the edge of some bushes, put on his stomach, you know, and had his head resting on his arms as if he was sleeping. An old blanket that was already there placed on top of him like he was trying to keep warm. It was pulled up to his shoulders. So we, I know we talked about this in the last video with how he was found, like where we were talking about, like with uh, Catherine talking about, you know, maybe remorse or something like that. Or well, with him like laying on his arms, may have been trying to make it look like he just died there, like he was sleeping there and died. Maybe. I don't know. You know what I mean? But with picking because those around homeless people, and they're like, oh, let's just. Make it look like he had slept here and a homeless man killed him. Yeah, which was the cop's eye was. Yeah. That's why they took forever. Mm -hmm. So, but he wasn't dragged over to the bushes. I'm thinking where this cross was at. It goes, I think it's bushes there and like a path that goes down to the walking trail. In that area. If, they, if they went in that way. That's just from looking at Google now. Because I'm waiting... Um, when we done Leah Hickman's case, uh, I I write to a, one of the latest serial killers, uh, Todd Colin Hep, and I gave him like some background information on Leah, and he actually sent back like his opinion on it. I'm waiting, you know, because I should be hearing back hopefully from him anytime, and I'll probably ask him about this just to get his opinion on it. To, I'll probably most likely post that on a blog. Like I did with Leah, because he's interesting and doesn't mind talking about stuff like that and actually share his information. Well, he was actually rare too, because this the thing on where he's technically a mass murderer too, with the bike. Place oh story. yeah. Mm -hmm. While like getting his opinion on things, you know, because he's a killer, so he kind of. If the other guy writes back, I can get his opinion. One that was on the TV show, the truck driver. He only was like convicted of like one murder, but he's like confessed to a bunch because they said uh, I'm getting off topic. But I like being able to get opinions from people that's been involved like that. Uh, there are items missing, and the detective before says he was not aware of that. And I know we talked about this, like they should let anybody who works in the case know information. They should. Don't seem to be like they handled it very well, which we kind of talked about. Maybe that's why they're not getting other people involved, like the FBI or something uh, higher up, because ego or where they messed up. But what was weird, though, even though that the text said he was not aware of it, she said that they've told them in the beginning what all was missing. My understanding, it was a Bluetooth speaker and a gold chain. But uh, the girlfriend of the suspect said that when Kyle opened up his wallet, it looked like he had several hundreds in it. Um, it was probably a bunch of ones that he had planned on buying a bus ticket. This is, you know, when I was talking to his mom. With Kyle, did get an allowance from his dad, and he was great at saving money. So, how would you think there was a bunch of, like, did they maybe see a hundred? 
and just thought where well, he had a wad of it inside. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe. And they just like, oh, he might have a lot of money because she felt motivation was money. Wrap your big bills. But maybe it was one. Inside your little bills. Like, that's kind of like maybe it was ones and got mad it wasn't hundreds that killed him. But would you kill somebody over? Like, if say you had a hundred dollar bills. I know. Say you had like ten ones wrapped in. They're like, oh, God, he got a thousand dollars. You kill him and find out it's only a hundred ten dollars. Like, so you don't, you don't. Cause I know we, like in our last video, like, does this crime scene, like, does it speak to us? I know we talked about it in the last video. Like, does it really... So you don't think that he was murdered there? No. It kind of, like, if you look at it that way, it could be more like an opportunity. You know, they killed him. Like, oh, homeless people are down here. But you would still think if homeless people are down there all the time, that, you know what I mean? Like, something would... Maybe somebody would assault them, but maybe it's yeah. just kind of like a roll of the street, not the same thing. But then again, they might have got lucky. Might have been a, or they could have gave him money or like food or anything to like here. Well, you, we know we him. know that a lot of them like said, "Oh, this one killed him and all that." So we know that they, which it could just be that. But if he wasn't killed down there, like it would have to be. They knew maybe nobody was down there at that night because they said it was draining and maybe just opportunity. So that would be a place because if you left him wherever he was at, but you think, well, I don't really, because we don't really know an exact time frame, but it always just says evening. It says night. So it kind of just depends, I guess, on that. Yeah. Um, okay, there's two pages of this. But he was supposed to go to his mom's in a month with his dad anyway, from my understanding. But said he couldn't wait and wanted to see her. Um, one article mentions Kyle wasn't even planning to visit his mom when he came home to Kentucky. He was planning on going to one of his best friends. Uh, one detective said the medical examiner did say blunt force trauma, but didn't fully explain what may have happened. They could not tell if a weapon was used or whether it was a result of a slip and fall. But where he was found was a rocky area, so they weren't able to determine if it was the result of a blow or a fall. But it was later ruled a homicide. So I know Courtney had mentioned that uh, possibly a rock might have been the weapon. Which that would just be opportunity. Yeah, I was just there. Yeah. But that means he'd be killed down there. But if they didn't find the rock, maybe through, through the rock. Or if or they were water. taken down there and he like wasn't actually dead, and like they thought he was dead and was trying to dump him, but then he kind of like made noise because like not like I hate, I kind of hate talking about stuff like this because like I want to talk about it because it's like yeah. it's a good theory, but then again like this is someone's kid, and I know like the mom watching like it's probably hard talk about but and especially but like right when, around all this it's yeah really four years ago but like when when you die you release air sometimes it sounds like noise stuff like that like it's like if they would have thought he was dead and then he like when they're moving him if he would have like released air even if he was dead they could have thought he was alive and then just like picked up a rock for safe measure or anything sorry if that's kind of harsh but it's just, i mean it's it's valid theory but one way you could look at it there too would be you could look at a homeless person possibly doing it as well because then maybe Greyhound was closed, you know, since it was closed, not running, maybe the other place and he just walked on the yeah. walking trail down there and then a homeless person jumped him. Like that's a possibility. You know, that that's a very good chance because like that would be. Nice clothes, maybe thought he had a lot of money. Well, there. This I talked to one of his friends, and this is kind of where some of the information came from. Here later on, yes. So it kind of threw me for a ringer when he mentioned it. But Kyle's mom said in one article she got a message on Facebook about four months later. So we're looking at October. Uh, the individual claimed he killed Kyle. The individual said he let him 
I mean, he hit him in the back of the head and watched him bleed out. He claimed Kyle was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He would apologize for it, but police found out it was a false confession, which we see that a lot in cases. People will falsely confess to put their stuff in there, get them 15 minutes of fame, disappear, or you know, find out that they're not tied into it. Because the one episode we're going to cover on on the podcast, it's a real creepy one with possibly a false confession or a real one. So, I don't know who the man was, but, like, why do you think he would put, I don't know, I don't know if the cops ever said why it was false, like, I know they looked into it, but why would he, well, you don't really know why people do that. Like I said, if they just do it for the fame or something's mentally wrong with them, they just try to intercept him. Or like, does he have any connection with anybody in it? Or if they were really close with someone that did it and was covered for them, like, just love them that much, like, mm, I'll take the ball. But uh, someone did comment on an article in 2017. They didn't give a name or anything, but I thought this was interesting. But may have some inf- info on this case from this kid that did something to my daughter. And the word is this kid had something to do with his murder, so we shall see. And his mom had replied back, you know, and they never said anything. So could it be with the, the one boy that's the suspect? And that could be this dude's daughter or girl's daughter. I don't that, know if that's know, a broke comment. Out. You should be able to figure out who it is. They didn't have their name. Nominous. We still figure it out if they really wanted to. I mean, you may not be able to. Well, you know, somebody's really got really the technology. To. But it had to be somebody still be local. Um, but it could just be another false confession just tying herself into it. But, like, why? I don't know why. If nobody ever contacts. You know what I mean? Like, why leave a comment and just never reply back? You know what I mean? Like, you could, you could find her. And, well, maybe somebody contacted them. Like, maybe police or, like, someone did figure out who it was and talked to him. True. Possibly. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know. The way the, comment back. the way the cops are, though, they just don't know. Well, yeah, there's sh- <laughs> yeah. But a friend said um, he'd see Kyle... And say, see you the next morning. And Kyle said that he'd be there but never showed. This was after, like, football practice the day the day before on the 15th, 15th, I believe. Yeah. And he said two days later, Kyle's dad showed up. He said Kyle had left sometime during the night while he was asleep. He said he was told, along with other friends, that nothing was missing on Kyle. Yeah, he was told that nothing was missing on Kyle. And once the grandma was arrested, he said the boy had went missing and no one could find him. He ran and fled the state from what everyone was saying. That even makes it more fishy. If he, like, left the state. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we can't find him. But see here saying left sometime during the night, like I said, I've seen evening. Like, But this is what kind of threw me for a loop. Uh, said this friend mentioned that $74 was on him and some weed. And I know in the interview I talked with Courtney with that. I guess it was like in his front pocket or something. So, mm-hmm. well, $74. Because oh. if his wallet and everything was gone, like he had money. So, could the motive. Why would he have money that wasn't in his wallet? I don't know. Like, Unless he had to keep it separate for like if he was middleman or something. Put, but could you put like would motivation be for money or they just didn't check that pocket no if you're robbing somebody you're checking all their pockets that's why that's my and you think the homeless person too yeah. like if he got jumped you know, uh, unless you got spooked like somebody came along or something to scare you off mm-hmm. like yeah i'd be checking everything yeah that's but you think that if you got spooked, if somebody came down, then, you know, somebody would know, like, hey, I saw somebody over, you know, Cause like, like I saw somebody here, which you might not be able to give detail because if it was well, dark. It was just like another homeless person that doesn't know the 
contact or something. Like but uh, that's what he heard from others. And also he felt Kyle never made it to the bus station alive. Believes the boy wanted more from Kyle and the grandmother stepped in afterward and stopped him. So he's thinking maybe like he did take some of the money and took a little you know, wallet, cell phone, and all that. And then the grandma's like, hey, no, we got to go. And just pulled over there and went down that way. And I found out, too, that the boy had shorted Kyle on a deal before. Not sure what kind of deal it was, but... Probably weed. Possibly, like, maybe Kyle gave him some weed or something. Maybe that well, could I mean, be- they all obviously have had weed at some point. I'm, I am sure it's weed. And he just never paid him back or something. Which, that could be why the cops were trying yeah, to say he's that, a drug dealer. Well, he could have just, like, thrown at him something, like... You know what I mean? Just... Gave him a G and been like, all right, pay me when you can, and then never. Yeah, being nice and yeah. the boy just, which the boy don't sound like from things I've heard. He's not, he wasn't very well liked by people. But that could be why the cops maybe say he was a drug dealer because maybe that boy's like, oh, he sold me weed all the time. Well, yeah, because they want to trying to rat him out. They want to make it look like he is a bad guy. Like, oh, don't worry about if this case is solved or not. If he was a teenage drug dealer. Like, sorry, but. Weed's not drug dealing. Get over yourself. Uh, well, I joined a group, um, willing something about willing. Trying to think, but there's a guy that had messaged me. Uh. Uh. But he had said, you know, about the boy's death, the woman and the boy that last saw him were my ex-mother-in-law and her grandson. Too many things were out of sorts in my head. The boy had all all the kids' personal items and threw them over the hill behind the house. Why? And she was a nurse that lost her job for diverting meds, I do believe. Too many iffy things that never seemed to pan out. I really do believe the boy, even if not responsible, knows who is. So... A lot feel that possibly he, even if he didn't do it, they know who done it. Which could that go? Because uh, the one guy I talked to, I can't remember if I talked about it in one of the other videos, where he had heard that. I thought I wrote, I might have mentioned that in another video. Let me double check. But I remember, thought I talked about it with Courtney as well. Uh, Because he was talking about he never trusted the guy that Kyle rode with. And he thinks they are covering something up. Because he used the term ran away. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. Because he was, he was, because he said I was with him. Before the night before he ran away. But he heard that, you know, he was taken up there, given to some willing boys. Just a bunch of mixed stories running through a lot of people. So, and he said he don't know exactly what type of connection he would have had with them. I never heard him mention them. So, could those people have done that? Like, what if that boy was in trouble with some other people and just kind of took Kyle up there to, you know what I mean? Like, here you go. Like saying. Oh, I don't think that that would really... You can't... <laughs> you can't switch out and just be like, here, here's, here's well, a sacrifice. Well, not that, but... For my mistake, like, that's... No. <laughs> That's how I was, uh, like, I mean, like, more of, like, what if he, like, kind of said, hey, this guy, this boy's got a lot of stuff, you know, maybe he's got some weed and money, like, he can get you set up, and then, 
know what I mean? Like maybe this boy shorted them yeah. through like using Kyle and still shorted them, maybe, and then something like that could have happened. Yeah. But like, why would you? Why would you go? Which it ain't that long of a drive, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So maybe there was some connection up there. I just don't know why they're still not a big suspect with the cops saying they don't feel they've done it. But even if they didn't do it, they it just still seems like that guy said they have to know something. Yeah. Somebody's covered up something. Because, like what we talked about in the last video, like, you know, the grandma didn't say nothing else about it. You know, if he's changed his stories, they threw his stuff behind the house. Like, there's no reason for any of that. There really isn't. That's why I'm not understanding why they're not being looked at. But hopefully, like I said, I'll talk to the one lady uh, on Monday morning. And I'll get some information to possibly tie in some more things. And if, you know, when me and her talk, I will try to get... Will be a podcast or a video? Uh, from my understanding, I don't... Like you're just going to record it, right? No. Well, if I do, it would be just for uh, me to re-listen to write notes down if I don't write the notes down then. But when I talked to her the other day, she didn't want to be recorded to her. Okay. So it'd be basically like, say, if I do record just it... Just like a private thing. Yeah. To then I'll just... Back. Yeah. To make sure I got everything. So I respect people when they don't you know, want stuff to be out there with their names attached to it. Because I, I usually... Well, I don't use. I always ask when I interview somebody: is, is it okay, you know, to use their name and stuff like that? So, so you know, she didn't want to be on the episode, uh, an episode for the podcast. So, hopefully, you know, talk to her uh, and get everything worked around with it, and see where that goes. I think she could provide some very good information. And like I said, if she, we and her talk, then. Hopefully have another video possibly next Saturday or if something else comes up. You know, be able to get another video out there. And if anybody else wants to talk to us, like I said, I can record it and publish it on the podcast. You know, if you guys have anything to add or if you, if you don't want to talk, to, well, if you want to talk to me still, you can message uh, our page and, you know, and tell us some things and, you know, I can jot notes down for the next video as well. Um, trying to think what else like i said once todd gets back with me i'll try to get that situated that usually takes about a month or so to hear back from him, maybe two months up, up to like i said where he's supposed to be getting transferred oh yeah yeah man remember i talked to you well, i should be hearing from him about usually about once a month two months tops I, with how mail is right now it's hard to tell how long it all takes ramping up but uh, I guess that'll be it for tonight, and we thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you, like the possibly on another video next weekend. Uh, once every once me and her make the phone call and stuff, I'll end up uh, making an event page for it. Like I said, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.